Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to take just a little bit further look at single sideband and AM uh, tuning and just talk a little bit more about the waveforms. I've got some real world examples taken from my software defined radio. Uh, with the aid of the IC7300, which now has the RF tap in the back. So let's jump into a couple slides uh, to explain what's going on, and then we'll get into those videos. This is a quick view of some elementary waveforms in the time domain. Uh, time domain means that along uh, this uh, axis down here is uh, time uh, goes this way, time. Okay, so here's a sine wave, a square wave, a triangle wave, a sawtooth. Uh, we've seen this sort of stuff before. Now, uh, in a very recent video, I showed this diagram down here uh, showing the uh, modulated carrier. And um, this is AM at 100% modulation. This right up here is a look at the modulating waveform the signal, sometimes called the baseband. And it's just a simple sine wave right here. And you can see that the envelope here matches the sine wave up there. And it also does down here too, but that, that's just part of the uh, way the signal is put together. Uh, it's going to center itself on something, and that's what it centers itself on. Now, Here's an example where I created a signal, this one up here. I took um, a sine wave at one frequency, a sine wave at twice that frequency, and a sine wave at three times that frequency. So let's just suppose this is 500 hertz, 1000 hertz, 1500 hertz, and it gives you a waveform like this uh, when all of the sine waves start at zero at the same time. Now, we choose either the time or the frequency domain, depending on which is most convenient. This is interesting, but frankly, other than the fact that it's got a max and a min and you can calculate the voltage and so on, it doesn't tell you much about the signal. This right here is the frequency domain, and as amateur radio operators, we're very used to operating in the frequency domain. This axis over here, this one is time, and this one is, of course, frequency. Note that this complex waveform devolves simply to three arrows here. The height of the arrow is the amplitude, or the magnitude of that particular frequency, and it's less here for 2F, less here for 3F, and this is the combined waveform. So time domain, frequency domain. Now let's look at this. Um, this is the screen from the IC7300. We're going to start over here. This is the time domain audio signal. And you'll note here that it's a complex waveform. Okay. And now when we translate this in the frequency domain, we're not going to get discrete signals at different frequencies, but rather we get a whole bunch of frequencies spread around. Uh, the way this works here, these are the low or bass frequencies. These are the high or treble frequencies. Now, in um, communications, we usually cut off here somewhere around 2.5 to 3.0. And it doesn't start here, you'll see, until about 300 hertz. Okay, that's actually above middle C on the piano keyboard. And the reason it does that, this is often called the communications bandwidth. Okay, sometimes referred to as just 3, sometimes 2.7, but this is the communications bandwidth. A nice audio signal on an FM channel is much wider than this, uh, but this is considered good enough, has been considered good enough for uh, speaking. Uh, oh, golly, from the 30s. Okay, so this is the frequency domain of the audio signal. This and this mirror each other. Now, I want to point out something, too. Let me just erase all those and point out that the upper part here is what you would see on a spectrum analyzer. At this 
frequency, this is the height of the signal. Now this part down here is referred to as the waterfall. And what you see here is a history. So this is sort of writing this like it's writing it on a blackboard, except the highest uh, up here becomes the brightest down here. Okay, so when you see uh, up here, and this is the 1400 to 14350, this is your FT8 and things like that are right in here. And you see the spectrum type thing up here, and this is the history. And you can see it's not varying much, so it's been a fairly constant of amplitude during its history. All right, we're looking at uh, an AM signal, which is this signal right here. You see the carrier right there and how strong it is? And during the period of time that there's no talk, uh, you can see that nothing happens. This is a baseball game recreation. And here we go back to it. We see that the actual signal from the game is a little bit wider. But what we're looking for out here are the higher frequencies. Note in this signal that uh, the, sides, uh, the, the side bands are quite a bit stronger. And note that they carry um, the higher frequencies out here and the main frequencies in here. This is what uh, AM looks like, the strong carrier there too. And what we see here in the waterfall are signals, and you can see that they come up up here. Now, as I tune this back and forth, you see that the uh, zero position on this upper sideband signal moves around. And the zero position needs to be put at here at zero. Now, you'll note there's a slight carrier, and uh, the signal... Uh, is doesn't have any zero components. Now here I'm tuning the signal again and uh, trying to get it in just right here. You'll note that there's no signal when there's uh, a lull, that the human voice has a big chunk in here that it doesn't use very much and another one in here. Uh, but you'll see uh, some sometimes it is used. All right, here we have a signal. Now this is 40 meters, so it's a lower sideband. This is where the carrier would be if there were a carrier, and there is not. And you see the signal occupying the space from about 0 to about 3,000 hertz right here. And you can see it down here on the waterfall. So when you're tuning uh, lower sideband, you insert your carrier, meaning you put your radio right on that. Notice there's about 300 kilohertz a gap in there. That is normal for single sideband. All right, so there we have it. What we looked at was uh, an AM signal, a real one, and some single sideband signals, real ones, uh, just to see what it means to have a carrier, not have a carrier, where the information is, and a couple examples of where the single sideband is tuned in wrong and how weird it sounds when it's tuned in wrong. It moves all the frequencies around. So I'm going to toot my own horn just a little bit here. Please take a look at decastlercom slash support. There I go. I tooted my horn. Also remember that on Thursday evening and on Saturday uh, early afternoon, I have live streams uh, to answer viewer questions. You can submit a question to that by going to ke0og.net slash ask hyphen Dave. That's ke0og.net slash ask hyphen Dave. There's a form there where you can submit an answer. Now I have had a little trouble uh, with that, uh, make sure that you you should get feedback showing you your message. If you don't, try a different browser or something like that. It acts up sometimes. If it does act up, I'll point out on the live stream uh, that a message got garbled. So, it's a beautiful May day, here the day after Memorial Day. And so I wish to all of you, until we next meet, 73.